Carol Channing and Betty White appeared on a few love boats together, and they really liked working with each other. So, well, they want to do more of it. They're putting together a television show called Friends Like Us, and that title is taken from that beautiful epigram with friends like us, who needs enemies? And now on this show, they play best friends who are also arch competitors. And I can't think of a better way to define these characters than to put them right here into the format of my show. Watch. <laughs> Our guests tonight are uh, two women who are behind one of the country's most popular magazines, La Woman. Carol Conklin and Betty Abernathy. Here they are. Now, Carol and Betty are best of friends. Oh, we've been friends forever. <laughs> oh, longer than that, Merv. Really, not only friends, but co-workers. You both work on La Woman. Well, we don't exactly work on it. Uh, I work on it. I own it. Uh, that is very impressive. And how did you uh, get to publish this wonderful magazine? Oh, all the usual reasons, Merv. Hard work, patience, indefatigable strength. Admirable. Uh, yeah. Admirable. And her husband gave it to her. Well, <laughs> being married to him took hard work, patience, and indefatigable strength. <laughs> But single-handedly, you made La Woman the leading magazine of its kind. Yes, I did. <laughs> single-handedly? Well, maybe I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we, we've worked together to change its image. Yeah. The high fashion look was my idea. Uh. The centerfold was mine. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Merv, La Woman was the world's leading unread magazine. The only thing about it that was read was the ink in the financial statements. <laughs> mm. Well, La Woman is certainly read today. It's probably the... Uh, biggest woman's magazine in the United States and the world. Oh, bigger than that, Merv. Bigger. Both men and women read La Woman. And all those in between. Ah. <laughs> That's right. You know, they all want to know what women are thinking. Even women want to know what women are thinking. That's, that's why they read our letter columns. Oh, then you have a column where you answer letters from your readers. Yes. You both do? Yes. yes, but they're all together different. Uh, you see, in my column, it's called A Word from the Publisher by Carol Conklin, and in it I answer letters from my readers about their personal problems. And Betty, your column is altogether different. Altogether different. Mine is called Dear Editor by Betty Abernathy, and I answer questions from my readers about their personal problems. I see. Now, you see, Betty has always tried to do everything that I I do so well. So, when I wrote my first column for the magazine... I read it, and I thought, this is so silly. Any idiot could do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Betty did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I think the secret of La Woman, Merv, is that it's, it's slanted at today's young woman. I mean, she's, she's bright, she's independent, career-minded, single, more or less. <laughs> There are times when she needs the counseling of someone more experienced, more knowing, more sophisticated. And so, so she, she writes, writes to me. me. But if you both, wait a minute, if you both write advice columns, don't they say the same thing? Oh, no, not at all, Merv. You see, in her column, Betty seems to completely ignore the existence of, of good manners, proper upbringing, nutrition, and the Ten Commandments. Carol keeps uh, completely ignoring the existence of sex. Oh, oh Betty, that's just not true. Well, it is. Well, everybody knows sex exists. That's all everybody needs to know. Then you think, <laughs> you think there's too much sex these days, Carol? Well, Merv, I don't mind if they do it, but not all over my magazine. <laughs> and what's your attitude about sex, Betty? <laughs> I don't care what people do in bed. As long as they don't scare the dogs. <laughs> it's incredible to me, as different as you two are, that you're such good friends. Oh, Merv, why shouldn't we be friends? We share so many of the same things. What do you share? Well, 
Same hair color, the same career, the same husband, the same children. The same husband and children? Oh, I love those children as if they were mine. They are yours. <laughs> well, you see, my Betty is their real mother. I am their father's wife. I am their, so to speak, mother of means, as it were. And I'm their good buddy. How, how, how many children? Three. Gwen and Andy and... Chester. Well, don't prompt me. I know his name. I should. I named him. Chester. Chester is still at home with me. How old is Chester? Old enough. Chester should have been thrown out of the nest years ago, but Carol won't do it. You understand, Merv, we are on the top floor. <laughs> That's another thing we share. We both live in the same apartment building. I live in the penthouse. I'm on the fourth floor. I own my apartment. I rent mine from Carol. I own the building. Actually, the building belonged to my husband. My husband. You see, Betty was married to Brick, and then she divorced him just before I married Brick. Good timing. At the time we split up, uh, Brick and I had a big custody fight. I won. Brick got the children. <laughs> Why did you divorce him, Betty? Well, I... Irreconcilable differences? That's... No, not really. I think it was more to do with his hobby. What was that? Women. He was an <laughs> Olympic champion broad jumper. <laughs> Even after he married you, Carol? Well, Merv, I always say that there's an old adage that says, what you don't know won't hurt you. But you did know. It didn't hurt me. <laughs> Where's Brick now? Good question. He travels. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> you know, he is so involved with so many businesses, it keeps him away from home so much. How much? Hmm. Well, this last time it's been eight years. <laughs> Eight years? Where'd he go to, Mars? I don't think so. You see, I know, though, Merv, that he is coming back to me, if only to see how I'm doing with the magazine. You know, I would love to hear some of the advice that you two hand out. Uh, we've passed out cards to the audience, and we've gone through them. We've selected a couple here. You think you could answer them uh, right now? I don't see why not. Sure. Well, give us an example of your column. Okay, uh, question number one from Mary Small. Do you think a woman should save herself until she finds the man she wants? Yes. <laughs> Betty, you go first. Well, crackers only get stale on the shelf. Practice makes perfect. If you want virgin wool, look for an ugly sheep. <laughs> I didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> Carol, do you think a girl should save herself for the right man? Merv, it's a matter of attitude. A man is so grateful if you let him know that he's the first. It works every time. <laughs> Let's go to the next question here from the uh, audience. Uh, Shirley Bonner wants to know, do you have help answering the questions in your column? Oh, yes. I have a marvelous secretary. She just seems to know everything, and she's been with me for quite some time. But poor Betty has nothing but trouble with help. It just seems as if it's always somebody different. Well, I like to have somebody that I can send out in the field for research. A leg man. With any luck. <laughs> <laughs> the one that she has now resembles Steve Garvey quite a lot. Oh. Last month, there was one who looked like Vince Ferragamo. Last month, it was Vince Ferragamo. <laughs> well, I hate to bring this to a close. I, I, I'd like to hear more. You two are really the odd couple of chic. <laughs> <laughs> Betty the Swinger and Carol Miss Prim. Please come back, won't you? No, wait a minute, Mer. Betty isn't a swinger. She's just a free, blithe spirit. That's what you say about Carol. Carol is not Miss Prim. I mean, the best advice in the world I get from her. Yeah. Yeah, but you just, you, you said the same thing that I just said. That's sa different. We're best, best friends. Best, best friends. But Carol yeah. herself thinks that you're a little loose and casual loose about... Loose and casual? Mer, for heaven's sakes, why do you say that about... Why are you picking Me? on Betty so I mean, well, how do I get to be the heavy well, here? Well, obviously, you don't know the first thing about friendship, Mer. Friendship, Mer. Well, uh, 
uh, we're a little late, folks. Good night. Well, I mean, Good night. I think somebody doing a show like this would have a little more perception. Wouldn't a, a, a closet show. Well, yeah, that could That's be. I mean, he's not dumb. Don't I don't know what it is. You know what it is. What he's not listening to us. He's thinking about what he's going to say next. He's thinking about what he's going to say next. Well, there are the stars and the situation of, of a really funny sitcom called Friends Like Us. Now you've met the players, the ladies who run America's number one woman's magazine, La Femme. But what about the cast of characters who surround them? First, you heard about the hunk of the week who assists Betty until a better hunk comes along. This uh, very well might be John Eric Hexham. Do you feel exploited? <laughs> not, not really. Oh, come on. Look, you see... <laughs> they're seeing it. They're seeing it. Oh. See it. Even the Merv Griffin show. I tell you. Pretty greased up there. Yeah, well, you see, there's certain things you got to do within the, the confines of the character. La Femme's fashion designer and a constant conflict is James Hawk, sometimes known as Gypsy, who kept us laughing in Mel Brooks' To Be or Not To Be. I have 400 outfits, most of them couturier, you should live. Well, <laughs> well you must live in them. Uh, I, uh, only during the evening hours. Oh, yeah. Ah. And during the day, it's a simple well, business? Well, sim what's simple? This is a Mark Piscatelli. Can you say that? I don't care. It's Italian. I can't say it. Mark, what Piscatelli? Piscatelli, yes. <laughs> yeah. I wear men's clothes from him. How many men's suits do you have? You really hurt me with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I search for a week for this. No, uh, I have about 30. But 400 ladies. 400 ladies, uh. which I'm willing to Ava. Uh, You're leaving it to me. Fit your ankle. <laughs> Every successful national magazine has to have a great circulation manager who gets that cover onto the front of the rack at the supermarket and at the newsstands. How he does it, Betty and Carol never question, although they recognize he is a tough character with some pretty shady friends. Guy Marx is his name. You're Italian. You are Mario Scarpa. Armando Amarico Scarpa. Oh, my word. From the Metropolitan Opera Company. That's from La Tosca. And, you, and a lot of Italian families have flamingos on their lawn. Yes, they? they do. Yeah. And they also have, they pick up clamshells and put them around flowers, usually back east. And they grow tomatoes. You know, years ago, uh, they had a little patch of ground, and they grow tomatoes as big as your head. Today, they have three acres that can't grow a tulip. Really? <laughs> And like every great American woman's magazine, the office is filled with the world's most beautiful faces and bodies for cover shots and for fashion layouts, with guest appearances from beauties like Christy Brinkley. What is it like when you see your, and hear yourself for the first time up on the big silver screen? Uh, it is. It's the weirdest sensation. I mean, I was excited. I was so excited. We, we had a screening with my mom and dad and some friends the other day. I was really nervous, but suddenly there I came on the screen. And it's like, you know, do you ever like put those Sony, Sony Walkmans on and you're singing along with the song and somebody presses the button and suddenly you hear yourself? And it's like, that's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a surprising. It's a shock. It is. There you have it. The stars and the players with a thousand stories of life in the big city, glamour, fashion, romance, and comedy in Friends Like Us, starring Betty White and Carol Channing.